Welcome back, everyone. This is a 5 p.m. update on Hurricane Milton. Now, if you're just tuning in and haven't seen the information that has played out today, uh, let me just bring you up to speed. Uh, Milton has uh, undergone a, a rapid intensification period uh, all day today and is unfortunately now a Category 5 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. So let's look at the current statistics. Um, maximum wind speeds of 180 miles per hour pressure down to 905 millibars, uh, movement to the east at, at 10. And you know, the, the question everybody wants to know is, is where will Milton go and what sort of impacts it will bring. Generally gonna move, continue moving to the east overnight tonight and then gradually turn towards the northeast uh, on the day on Tuesday and approach the Florida Peninsula on Wednesday. Here you can see just offshore the Florida Peninsula, 1 p.m. Wednesday, with max winds of 145 miles per hour. It's then gonna move somewhere across the Florida Peninsula, potentially staying a hurricane during its entire uh, trek across the Florida Peninsula and emerge out in the Western Atlantic. Now, we've got a lot of changes with this particular advisory, so I'm sort of zoom in here so we can unpack this map for you. So all these colors here are, are conveying what sort of impacts that you might experience in your community. The cone doesn't tell you that, so let's not focus too much there. Let's focus on this. So the yellow area here is a tropical storm watch, means tropical conditions, tropical storm conditions are possible. And look, they extend all the way down now into southeastern uh, Florida, including Miami-Dade and Broward County. The red area here is a hurricane warning. So the warning is different from the watch because it is saying conditions are expected. So what does that mean if you're in this hurricane warning area? So let's zoom in and look closely at some of the towns, uh, Tampa, Cape Coral, Orlando, basically the entire I-4 corridor. You need to be preparing for hurricane conditions. So no more uh, you know, waiting and, and looking, you need to be uh, securing your home, making sure this is the time to put up your shutters. If you're going to do that, um, if you're going to leave or evacuate the area, this is the time to do that because this means that conditions are possible, uh, expected generally within 36 hours. Then on the east coast here, the Treasure Coast, you're under a hurricane watch. Portions of this area could be upgraded to a warning at a later time. So you need to be uh, paying attention and stay tuned often, and that includes uh, Jacksonville and Palm Bay. And then finally, you got a tropical storm warning is the blue area here. Uh, this area down here is a hurricane watch and a tropical storm warning. But the take home message is if you're in this red area, you need to be in action mode. You need to be taking action to protect your house, to protect your family. Now, it's not just gonna be a wind threat. Let's look at the storm surge threat too. I think most people know now the Florida West Coast is incredibly susceptible to storm surge, and that's why there is a storm surge warning now in effect from basically Flamingo down here in Florida, um, Everglades National Park, all the way up to just north of Cedar Key. That includes Cape Coral, Tampa Bay, Fort Myers, Sarasota. Why is it under a storm surge warning? Because let's look at this, the, the peak storm surge forecast. Now, the, the purple is gonna jump off the map here and it should. Somewhere in this purple area, not everywhere, somewhere in this purple area, we are uh, predicting 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. Put that in perspective, I'm six feet tall. That's more than two of me high. And if this is realized, that is more surge than was experienced during Helene. So to sort of put that in perspective. On each side of the purple area, including the Cape Coral area, let's see if we can uh, get this one, six to 10 feet of storm surge. Still incredibly high storm surge amounts, very impactful. And then even to the north, five to 10 feet of storm surge. Um, look how far south the storm surge makes it all the way down uh, to Chokoloski area, four to seven feet. Again, I'm six feet tall. That could be potentially over my head. And then um, we've added a new area here on the, the Florida East Coast or Treasure Coast potential for two to four feet of storm surge. But let's talk about this purple area, well, this entire colored area on the Florida West Coast, because a number of you are under mandatory evacuation orders, and you're wondering why I'm under a mandatory evacuation order. I'm so far away from the center or so far away from the cone. 
The evacuation orders are often based off this storm surge forecast. And because we expect Milton to grow in size before it makes landfall, it's going to spread the wind and storm surge impacts well away from the center. So let's not focus so much on where the center may or may not track because when it comes to what impacts you may feel, uh, that can be incredibly misleading. Now we'll end with one more hazard here, the rainfall. Um, so the rainfall threat, uh, this, is, uh, this is the excessive rainfall uh, graphic which tells you where flooding from rain could occur. So anywhere in this red area, you need to be on high alert for a flash flooding potential uh, even before, even before the hurricane makes landfall. And that includes uh, southeastern portions or metro Miami-Dade portions. So basically, all hazards are in play here. A multi-hazard event, um, you know, you really have to be thinking about significant widespread power outages for days uh, where this, the Milton crosses the Florida Peninsula. Um, significant down trees, significant power outages, maybe the inability to move around for several days. So I'm gonna leave you with this. What do you need? Let's think about what do you need to be home and stay home without power for several days? What do you need to be safe? What do you need to be comfortable in those conditions? And I want to urge everyone, if you've been ordered to evacuate, those evacuations orders are serious and you absolutely must follow them. That's it for us. We'll be back with our next video briefing tomorrow at 1130, but you can get more timely and the latest information at hurricanes.gov.